Jesus, keep me near the cross. There are precious fountains free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory Beyond the river to near the cross, a trembling soul, Lord, and mercy found me there, the bride. cross in the cross oh in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the If you do not come, we will be unfortunate. 
we plead with you therefore Lord to keep us near the cross Jesus being our only one focus Lord please come and in mercy speak to us this evening again we ask in Jesus name Amen thank you you may be seated I believe that since we started the Lord has been speaking to us uh, I, saw, I looked through the program and I know that the, the vicar has been taking some sessions with us and uh, though I'm, I wasn't here I believe that God in mercy must have been depositing uh, matters of eternal value uh, in our hearts. We will simply trust the Lord to build on. Uh, in these uh, four sessions, I believe, that we will have together, <clears throat> looking at the master's touch, the potter's touch. What I would like to do this evening is to uh, lay a foundation by the grace of God and we see how the Lord helps us to build from it subsequently. If you have your Bibles, and there's no reason why you shouldn't, when you're coming to church, come with your Bible. Let's open to Jeremiah chapter 18. Some of you are not carrying Bible. You say it's in your phone. Please open to Jeremiah 18. If you're having quiet time with the um, Bible in your phone and it rings or a text message comes in, that becomes a distraction. Are you in Jeremiah 18? If you have seen it, can you say praise the Lord? I'll read the first six verses. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel. <clears throat> and the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good. To the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look, as the clay is in the hands, in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The word of the Lord. I would like for us while paying particular attention to the few verses that we have read uh, I like for us to take note particularly that whatever we say of Jeremiah today now Jeremiah is gone his own time has passed and the people that God is particularly speaking to today who are they? We are the ones. We are the ones. Jeremiah has finished his ministry. I believe he's among the cloud of witnesses that are up there. Maybe someday when we get to heaven, uh, because I plan to be in heaven, I am making a very serious plan to make sure that I will arrive there. I have begged God that if he knows that by tomorrow I will enter the bush and not make it, let him call me home today. It will be better for me. There is nothing in this world, absolutely nothing, that is worth missing heaven for. As a matter of fact, the best citadel on earth does not qualify to be a toilet in heaven. Uh, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of ungodliness. 
I know that modern day Christianity, particularly in this part of the world, is becoming difficult to hear messages about heaven. And yet, that's where we are all hoping to go. We must speak more. We must keep talking about it. Where the streets are made of gold. The place where we will not have sorrows anymore. A place where there will not be death. A place where we will never grow old. I have heard of a land on a far away strand is the beautiful home of the soul built by Jesus on high. Where we'll never shall die It's the land where we'll never grow old Never grow old Never grow old It's the land where we'll never grow old, never grow old, never grow old. It's a land where we'll never grow old. You know, it pains me that we, we speak so little of heaven, a place where we hope to spend eternity, and we speak more of a temporal residence here on earth. It's not good. No wonder our minds, our hearts are not focused on heaven, and several things take away our attention. Some of our brothers make us feel that this earth is where we have come to stay. So they teach us how to claim it and get it and live here. What about heaven? If a man has all the good things of this life and misses heaven, he's a foolish man. He's a very poor investment. What is a hundred years compared to eternity? Even a hundred years of bliss. And nothing can really give you enjoyment outside Christ. I'm telling you. Maybe you feel this because if you feel, you feel that if you have all the money you, ha you need, you'll be happy. Money doesn't make you happy. A friend of mine used to work in a hospital in Joss. And he had an experience many years ago that it, 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 it blew my mind. I may not be able to tell the story exactly how he narrated it, but it sounds something like this. A very rich man, very rich man, had a, a terminal case. I've forgotten what he said it was, and he was dying. And he called him and said, Doctor, I am rich, I have money. Fly me to the best hospital anywhere in the world. No matter the cost, I can pay for it. I am rich. And he said, sorry, sir. Wherever we take you, you will still die. It's advanced, and there's nothing anybody can do about that. And he said, before his face, the man began to abuse his money. Some of you don't answer, understand how, sir. He said, Banza Kawai. Say, so look at me, I have so much money and I'm here dying, my money cannot help me. But that's what you're pursuing. The word of the Lord that we read this evening said, the word which came to Jeremiah. I was trying to say to you that Jeremiah is gone, so i like you to remove Jeremiah and put your name there. Can you say after me, the word of the Lord which came to pick. I want you to know that whatever we are reading, 
whatever the Holy Spirit will be saying to us this evening, actually, the Lord is directly addressing you. Jeremiah is gone. But to give it a context, Jeremiah had been a prophet from chapter 1, you remember. I was wondering why suddenly in chapter 18, God came and said something very unusual to Jeremiah. He said to Jeremiah, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there, I will cause you to hear my words. You know, when I, when I read the Bible, I like to take particular notice of what the word of God says. Because the Holy Spirit is not a careless talker. He said, Jeremiah, there's something I want for you to do. Go down to the potter's house. It is there, there, not here. There, there, I will cause you to hear my words. If Jeremiah stayed where he was, he was never going to hear this. He had to go there, just like you may remember the day that God said to Elijah, I want you to go down to the brook Cherith. I have commanded a raven there to feed you. There. Not here. If that man stayed where he was, he would never have been fed by the raven because heaven had commanded the raven to go to where? There, Brook Cherith. I don't know, maybe this meeting is that there that the Holy Spirit is talking about for you. Maybe today is that there. Maybe this youth conference 2017 is that there, there, that the Holy Spirit is talking about? He said, go down to the potter's house. And there, there, not here. I am going to cause you to hear my words. It looks as if to me that there are certain locations that men have an appointment with destiny with. It looks as if to me that sometimes God, we deliberately send a man to a place where ordinarily, if he was not there, he wouldn't hear the word of the Lord. It looks as if sometimes heaven prepares a menu for a man in certain locations and God will begin to orchestrate activities to make sure that the man arrives in that place. It looks as if to me, that this youth conference 2017 is another package, is another there that heaven has prepared for some of us. I am praying that you're not here just to count numbers. I'm praying that you're not here just uh, so that if they ask, was it there? Say yes. And if I don't go now, they say I was not there. I want for you to settle down and begin to imagine that heaven deliberately allowed you to come. In spite of the rain, God has brought you here. It seems as if this location is that there that the Holy Spirit is talking about. And you see, God had to arrange for Jeremiah to go there. Jeremiah had to leave wherever he was, and he began to go there. And where was the location that God was talking about? It was the potter's house. It was a potter's house. And Jeremiah, I want to thank God, listened to the word of the Lord. It, then I went down. That's Jeremiah reporting now. As God instructed him. Then I went down to the potter's house. And when I arrived, I saw something. I saw that the potter was actually making a, a vessel. Uh, some translations will say he was making a pot. It depends on the translation that you're reading. Old and New King James will say vessel. I think, uh, is it NIV or New Living Translation? We use pot. Who is carrying a New Living Translation? New Living Translation? NIV. What does NIV say? NIV says pot. Is anybody carrying New Living Translation? Yes, what does it say? Jah. Jah. Vessel. Pot. 
jar. Now, I think, I think, I don't know whether, I think some people may have an idea of a pot. Eh? Older people, at least I'm seeing Baba here with gray hair. That thing is not, is not color. Uh, it's by reason of years. God bless you, sir. May you age gracefully. And the prayer I pray for the elderly people in my church is that they will be strong in their old age. And if Jesus starts, when it's time to go, it will not be in pains. Uh, they will just age gracefully. That's my prayer for them. I pray that for you in the name of Jesus Christ. When you see gray hair, respect it. Did you hear me? Eh? Some of you, I'm afraid of you. The way you behave today. The Bible says you should stand up before the gray hair. Anointing does not mean disrespect to age. It doesn't. Anyway, I, I am praying that God will help you because we are raising a generation that does not know how to respect elderly people. And you think it's civilization. You're unfortunate. So, elderly people here will understand pot. What do you normally use pot for? This pot we are talking about is not necessarily, I don't think it's cooking pot necessarily. Eh? They used to be, you know, before refrigerators became rampant, there's, there's this clay pot our parents used to buy. And they would keep it in one corner, usually in a shade. Then they get fresh water and they put inside. I don't know, but if you take water from the pot, it tastes different. I, who has ever taken water from pot? Eh. So please, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. Eh? There's, there's a way it tastes. And it's, in the afternoon, it's cool. When it's hot, the water from the pot is normally what? It's cool. You know, our parents knew how to. <laughs> when my dad retired, I didn't know how he came about that technology. When he retired from civil service, he said he would not buy food. That he, he grew up in the village before he went to school and went to do government job. That he went back to the village and started farming. I didn't like that because uh, I was still a student then. So on holiday, you have to follow him to the farm, isn't it? I didn't like that one. There's something he used to do. He will go under the shade at the corner of the farm and he will dig a little pit then put the water there and use leaves to cover it. When it's very hot and you go and bring that water to drink, you think it came out from the fridge. Now, usually pots are used for storage. Am I, am I making sense? You either use it to store water. Sometimes larger pots are used to store grains. Is for storage, for preservation. Pots are used to store what you don't want to spoil, what you want to maintain, you store in a pot. And sometimes it's for uh, preservation. You preserve it in a pot. Whichever use you intend to put it, vessels or pots are useful in the hands of the owner. And usually, even if it's a pot that they used to go to the stream to fetch water in those days, it is carried with care. Because if it falls, it can break. But that's a pot. So, I don't know what was the in intention of the potter, but 
he was making a pot. He was making a vessel when Jeremiah arrived. And I don't think Jeremiah was uh, expected the kind of uh, instruction that came. I'm sure maybe he was wondering if he's like me. He would have been wondering, but why do I need to go to a potter's house? But well, the Lord said to go, so he went. And he said, when I arrived, uh, he was making something. He was, was walking at the wheel. He was designing a pot. He was, he was designing and making a vessel uh, with his clay and was really at work. And the first thing I noticed, can you bring me a chair? I like to, yeah, it's okay. I'm imagining that when Jeremiah arrived, he just sat down. Maybe they greeted. Say, how are you? Say, I'm fine. Uh, you just came. Uh, I came, I came to, to greet you. And the Lord said, I should come here. I don't know what he intends to say to me, but uh, he said, I should come. And um, I have come. It's okay, sit down. I, I'm walking. Will it disturb you? Say, no, continue doing what you're doing. And I imagine that Jeremiah was watching as the man was making the pot that he was making. He was walking with the clay. He was at the wheel. All the shaping, all the, I don't know how they make, they make a pot, but you know that Maybe they, they mix the clay, they beat it into, into the texture that will be uh, useful for the potter. And he began all those intricate designs. And Jeremiah was watching. And Jeremiah was patiently watching as the potter was making that vessel. And he walked and walked and walked. And a product emerged a vessel emerged a pot maybe emerged for Jeremiah who was sitting down and just watching the man making the pot as the pot Emerged. I'm imagining that Jeremiah would have been saying, Wonderful. Look at what this man has made. Because Jeremiah was not a potter, he doesn't know how to make pots. So that one that the man made, it would have looked fantastic to Jeremiah. Don't you think so? Eh? And Jeremiah will have been celebrating that and say, Kai, this man, oh no, 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 no. This man is wonderful. I was just watching and he did like this and did like that and did like that and then he just brought out this pot. Ah, wonderful. He could have been celebrating that. You know, in the, in the country of the blind, one-eyed man. Eh? Ah. It would have just been wonderful. But that is to the man who is observing. I don't know whether you understand. Are you following me? You know, I just want to lay a foundation this evening and, and I'm praying that you will catch what the Lord wants to drop with our hands so that you can pray effectively. If this story stopped here, I would have been rejoicing. All of us would have been rejoicing. It would have been wonderful. If the story stopped with Jeremiah watching the potter make that pot, it would have been wonderful. Jeremiah would have simply been telling us his story. He said, I just got to the potter's house. I sat down and I was watching him. And in a few minutes, look at what he has made. When I'm sitting down demonstrating, are they seeing me? Maybe you remove this. 
You know, I'm, I'm a teacher. I like to teach. Is there anywhere in the Bible where it's recorded that we must never sit down while preaching? Are you sure? Okay. So can you say after me, Brother Peak, I permit you to sit down if you want. Uh-huh. So you have permitted me. So, you no, know, bring, bring a small, a small uh, stool where I can keep my Bible. You think I will not still need my Bible again? Uh-huh. Thank you. Now, if that story just ended there, in all of us would have been rejoicing. Because I can imagine how Jeremiah would have said, hey, let me tell you what happened. I just went to the potter's house. I sat down and was watching this man. And he designed, hey, fantastic. A vessel came out. If that pot was carried by Jeremiah, and he's showing every other person, say, where did you get this pot? He said, wonderful. I got it from the potter's house. I was there when he made it. Isn't it beautiful? They will say beautiful. Kai, you're not, you're not following me. Are you following me? Eh? They will say beautiful. You know that <laughs> if you're doing biology in secondary school and your teacher is a useless man who doesn't really know biology. The little he's teaching you, he will set exam on it. And you're scoring 8, 70. You'll be doing like this and say, they may even give you a prize. Eh? SS1, best biology student in SS1. If you continue like that, without <laughs> finding out from the General Assembly, you know the General Assembly, eh? Wayek, their curriculum, you know that you could carry on like that. Maybe your biology teacher does not even, he doesn't mark Wayek, he doesn't check the curriculum. He just come and uh, he's teaching you all kinds of things. Eh? I think those days we used to use stone and cousin. And we, sometimes we call it stone your cousin. So he's just, he just teaching you all kinds of things until you appear at Wayek. And best biology student may be carrying, uh, they say F9. F9, there's still hope. You will get H10. That's hopeless 10. Which means even if you do it again, you will not get anything. Why is it like that? Uh, it's because we didn't have the mind of those who are going to grade you at the end of the course. So you could be doing like this. You could be raking for your mates until you arrive at the table of the man with the marking scheme. Who knows what Wayek originally intended for you to know? Which your teacher, your school didn't bother to find out and they were celebrating you. And they were buying you present as best biology student. Only for you to get to where it matters. And your result is damaged. Because of biology. Are you following what I'm talking about? Eh? If that matter with Jeremiah stopped with... Uh, uncle, wake up. If that matter with Jeremiah stopped with what he saw produced... Jeremiah not being a potter, he would have been celebrating and say, wonderful, wonderful. Isn't this good? Isn't this wonderful? But something shocked me. Jeremiah was not there alone. He was watching the potter make a vessel 
that although Jeremiah could rejoice about the vessel, he did not know what was in the heart, the original intention of the potter. If Jeremiah carried that vessel, he could actually even come to the altar and say, I've come to give thanks. Look at wonderful vessel, wonderful vessel. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Excuse me, if the potter was there, the potter would have been saying, excuse me, this pot is a disgrace. Why Jeremiah could rejoice? The potter that had something in mind. There was a design he had in mind. There was something he wanted to create. And as he was doing it, what turned out, what is in his hands now, is not what he originally intended to make. And the man says, useless. I condemn it. I will not have been worried today if the people celebrating you and calling you Jim Jim Christians are the ones to mark the final result on the last day. I will not have been worried, sir. If the people you're reading their books and you're doing like this are the ones who are going to score you on the last day, sir. I will not have been worried if the people you're copying on television who are posing like this and telling you, say, yes, claim it, just say after me seven times. Say, I'm a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. If they are the ones to mark your result on the last day, I will not have been worried. My trouble is that while there is a pot, there is a, a potter. And the potter is the only one who can tell us whether this pot that has emerged now was what I had in mind to make or not. Every correct pot before celebrating and say, come and look at me. Am I not wonderful? When I pray, things move. If I touch you now, you fall. Ah, uncle, before you do like that, every correct pot would have been going back to ask the potter, Simeon, is this what you wanted to make of me? I am tracing this because we are living in a generation where people no longer read the Bible to follow Jesus. They are following men. I see some of you, sisters, the way you dress. If we talk, you say, why are they talking like that? It's because they have not. In America, people just dress like this. In fact, if you look at uh, Reverend Soso Sanso, if you look at this man, hey, if you see his church, hey, they have, that's the way the wife dresses. Eh? It's because you have not gone to America. That's why, and I'm asking you, is the gospel we are preaching according to St. America? Do you know that Americans will not be the ones in charge of the gate of heaven? Do you know that even that man's wife will be lining up seeking admission? If he had already crossed, if he was the potter, if she was the potter, I wouldn't worry. But what I'm seeing now, can you imagine that a pot emerged? Jeremiah could celebrate the pot. The potter said, Ha! Ah. I can imagine Jeremiah saying, Ha! Ah, Uncle, wonderful. So you can make pot like this. I don't even know how to make a pot. The man said, This is a useless pot. This is not what I wanted to make. It is mad in my hands. It has become malfunctioned in my hands. I want to ask you this evening. Maybe you have given your life to Christ. I want you to check. Are you not malformed in the hands of the potter? Have you not formed badly in the hands of our Savior? Is this what Jesus wanted to make of your life? That when you get angry as a wife, ha, if you abuse a dead man, he will wake up. Is this what Jesus wanted to make of you? I can see how you're breathing like this and telling your wife, look, if you say, if I slap you, if I, that is, eh, that is,
I will show you that I'm your husband. Uncle Namumu, they worry you. Why do I need to show my wife that I'm, uh, I'm her husband? You think she's confused? Eh? So I will show you that I'm a man. Was she confused before? Did she marry another woman? She knew I was a man. That was why she married me. Unless you don't have better things to do. But excuse me, that way that you're behaving, eh, I can imagine the potter saying, ah, this one is malformed in my hands. Is mad. There is something that is an original intention that heaven has over your life. You see, Paul, he will say that I may apprehend that for which sake, for which purpose, Christ Jesus also apprehended me. There was something I was saved to do. There was something I was saved to become. There was a life I was saved to live. I want to live it. That's what Paul is saying. I want to catch that. I want to apprehend that. For which reason Christ Jesus also apprehended me. I want to ask you, the purpose for your salvation, the purpose for your birth, have you found it? Let alone accomplish it. As I was reading and I saw Jeremiah narrating, he said, look, the vessel that he made of clay was mad in the hands of the potter. Who is carrying that uh, new living? How, how did he put it, auntie? He was mad. Uh, He said the jar that he was forming didn't turn out as he wished. Hi, oh, please. Are you understanding me? Eh? Oh, you know I'm, I'm discovering something. That you turned out as your family wished. It's nothing to celebrate. You may not have turned out as heaven wished. That you turned out as your generation wished. Doesn't mean that you're correct. The question we should be asking is, did he turn out, did she turn out as heaven wished? That translation said, the jar did not turn out as the potter wished. There is a Christian life that heaven wishes for us to live. There is a life that we are called to live. And I want you to just be asking yourself a question. Am I living that life? Am I turning out into what God originally designed me to be? Is somebody understanding me? Uh, I won't keep you too long to this, this evening. Just, just to lay a foundation. You know there was a man who was so anointed by the Holy Spirit. Actually, even before he was born, the mother was told this is what he was going to do. His name is Samson Manoa. Do you remember Mr. Samson Manoa? Eh? The man was, there was a clear prophetic utterance even before he was conceived. That he was going to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He was going to deliver Israel. And heaven anointed him heavily. When you see Samson fight, fighting the Philistines, we will rejoice. And say he's dealing with the Philistines. But the potter. The potter is saying, Ah! Why is this boy going like this? Mad in my hands. Samson. Anywhere he went. There may be tall, tall buildings there. He doesn't see it. You will see women. 
Do you know the first battle that Samson fought? Do you remember? Eh? The way you're looking at me, you don't read your Bible. Do you remember the first battle that Samson fought? He went to kill Philistines so he can carry their clues. Because he did a betting. Niger bet. I hope there are no people like that here. With, uh, I hope there are no Christians here playing Kalu Kalu. <laughs> he went to collect the addresses so that he can, he can give back to the wife's people because they got his, uh, his riddle and he was angry. Now you will rejoice that he was killing Philistines, isn't it? But do you know he was not fighting the lost battle? He was fighting personal battles. He was taking personal revenge. How did he even get there? He was making a joke with his backsliding. I, I'm not teaching about something now, but, I, I, but are you following me at all? Do you know that by his Nazarite consecration, he was not supposed to touch a dead thing. He killed a lion. Granted that the lion roared against him. But where was he going that he saw a lion? He was going to see a Philistine woman. <laughs> but let's leave now. And the lion roared. I think that should have sent something to his ear. To his head. To say, uh uh-uh. uh. This journey that I'm going, is it correct? Are there no wives in Israel? Shouldn't I wait until heaven tells me the line of action to take against the Philistines? There were people who, who fought the Philistines and won. They did not become uh, in-laws with Philistines to win them. David fought Philistines and won. True or false? Uh, so a lion roared against him and he tore the lion into pieces. All right. He was not supposed to touch a dead thing. Some time after he was going back, he decided to go and check the carcass of the lion. What was he looking for? For what? He had already killed the lion. The lion had died. If it's a correct carcass, some days have passed. At best, it will be smelling, true or false. What was he looking for? You know, there are some places you go to. He said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not sin. What are you looking for? And you don't know the devil. A man that was not supposed to touch a dead thing. Look at what the devil did. He put honey on top of a dead carcass for him. And he went to take honey there. Already he had defiled himself. Rather than repent, he was making jokes out of his backsliding. What is stronger than lion and what is sweeter than honey? Where did you get the honey? I don't like half testimonies. How you will come to the altar and say, Brethren, praise the Lord. This sister you're seeing here, I just thank God. I just thank God. The Lord has helped me. I got a job in the bank. I got a job in the oil, ba- oil company. Excuse me. Tell us what you did. What about the night with the recruitment officer in one hotel? She will omit that and give a flamboyant testimony. And sometimes careless pastors who will not check anything will say, yes, how many of you want to tap into this anointing now? Come and drop offering and tap into this anointing now. I didn't see such things in the Bible. Maybe, me, I don't know. Maybe I never read Bible, Rich. You did Bible? Eh? But that was what Samson was doing. The next time we saw him dealing with the Philistines very ferociously was when they slaughtered his wife, they burnt his wife and her father. You remember that story? And he said, eh, since you have done this, I will deal with you. And he went to start. No, you will rejoice and say, he's winning, he's winning. Personal battles. Let me advise you, don't allow men to quickly celebrate you. 
Go and check from the potter whether you're turning out well. That is the best place to go and check. So you can imagine that this man sat and a pot was made. But the potter said, no. No. That's not what I intended. This clay is mad in my hands. Let me ask you, sister, brother, are you mad in the hands of the potter? Are you malformed in the hands of our father? Are you a young girl here? You can spend 30 minutes to put pancake on your face and make up, but you cannot spend 20 minutes to read Bible. You're mad in the hands of the potter. Do you call yourself a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ as a young girl? You're 18 years, 20 years, 20 something. You don't know how to cook. You're a disgrace to Jesus. Are you a young man here? Some of you are, I can see some young people here. You're in the university. You're a young man. You still live in your parents' house. And you will still be in your room. Your father will wash his car and go to work. You have not woken up. You are a disgrace to Jesus. You are mad in the hands of the potter. Are you here? You are not married, but you have already started doing what married people do. You are mad in the hands of the potter. You are mad. It pains my heart that many times we are at the altar and from the western door they are marching in. They say stand out, the bride is marching in. She's wearing white with veil. But that veil is covering an empty carcass. And you come to the altar we are asking will you take when you long ago you have taken. You took long ago. And we are saying will you take. You are mad in the hands of the potter. And you will smile and say will you take Will you take? Yes, I will. Why am I asking you, will you take? When you took long ago. You're mad. This evening, I just want you to x-ray by yourself. Check your life. Check your heart. What was it? That God wanted to make me. Where am I? Am I not mad? In his hands? Have I not become deformed? Even though people are celebrating me like Samson. They say what a wonderful man of strength. <laughs> but he was already deformed. And the devil will not allow him to repent. He can stand up from the laps of a prostitute and carry the gate of an entire city. Put it on his shoulder. Climb a hill. Keep it there. Say, if you want your gate, come here and take it. And he will walk away. And some people are saying, look, if God is not with me, let me tell you that a man is doing miracles. It's not sufficient for me to conclude that God is with him. We have even heard that sometimes even the power with which they do those miracles, the source of their sources are questionable. I want I just tonight I just want to ask a question. Are you mad in the hands of the potter? That's just just and it's a question only you can answer. I can't answer it for you. You cannot answer it for me. I've also learned that people are celebrating you at the pulpit. <laughs> it's not enough to go home rejoicing and say, yes, yes, yes. I went somewhere to preach and one, one pastor stood up and said, you know, this brother, I am not qualified to introduce him. When I stood up, I said, it's a lie. It's not true. Don't promote me to where God has not placed me. 
How can a brother not be qualified to introduce another brother? Who am I? You're not qualified to introduce me. You allow men to unduly celebrate you and you, they promote you to where it becomes difficult for God to correct you. Because you can sing. And two times they just told sister, hey, oh no, your voice, wonderful. Ah, her head will swear. She needs another hair tie. Because the one which she get now, her head don't be person. And they become artificial. The next time they're coming to introduce a son, they just hold microphone like they say, praise the Lord. We don't go here until they talk again. No? Praise the Lord. You see the song that we're about to sing now. They don't go hold microphone like this now again. I said, I said, I are you not mad in the hands of the potter? I say, bro, you qualify. There's no qualification to introduce anybody. I don't even like those elaborate introductions. For what? You know, <laughs> people were celebrating Samson, you know, and we may be celebrating you as a prayer warrior. I don't know where we even got that. Is there, some, is there something like that? I never read Bible, Rich. You want to tell me? You get something? We see prayer warrior for Bible. Say prayer warrior. Prayer warrior. Ten brothers are praying. Only ten of them. They will use microphone. Everybody around cannot sleep. Yama seke pro. Only ten of them. Says a prayer warrior, Uncle, you're mad. You're deformed. We have made prayer <laughs> a public spectacle. When Jesus said, "When you want to pray, enter into your closet and do what? Close the door." And pray to your father in secret. We make a public show of, the, of prayer now. Nobody can pray quietly. Nobody wants to do any work quietly. There must be poster. Even a church that is not more than 25, the first thing they are looking for to buy is public address system to disturb everybody in the neighborhood. What do you need it for? Samson kept going like that and they were celebrating him. Say, wonderful, wonderful. If he stands here now, <laughs> Philistines don't finish. And heaven was just wondering, say, why is this boy destroying himself? He's malformed, mad. You know, he kept going on like that until he fell in love with a woman in the valley. The valley of Sorek. He met his match, Delilah. But I want to thank God for Samson because he repented. But you know that before he repented, before he, he got it back, he had already lost his eyes. Sin is very deceptive. The day they came, that day, each time I remember that statement is something that makes me fear. Samson said, I will stand up and shake myself free as at other times. That's how they do them before. When they finish, say the Philistines are upon you, Samson. We just do like this. Where are they? And we finish them. He said, I saw it be before. It doesn't matter what I do. I will stand up and shake my. There's, there's a phrase there that frightens me. Say, Old King James, he said, But he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. He didn't know. I discovered that the Holy Ghost can leave a man and the man will not know can be insensitive and will not know. He lives quietly. He thought that he was a custodian of anointing. No matter what he did. But when he stood up to go, he discovered that the Lord had gone. They captured him like a jelly and they plucked out his two eyes. Do you need to wait to lose your two eyes before you go back to the potter to find to find out and say, Baba, 
Baba, am I mad? Am I mad? That's where I'm going to stop this evening. I just wanted to highlight this. Because we must pray. Am I mad in the hands of the potter? People are celebrating you. But can you carry your biology test book and go back to Baba? Carry your life and go back. Check the Bible and say, Lord, is this the life of a Christian that I'm supposed to be living? The people in my compound, do they know me as a Christian? People in my, in my, in my school, my cosmates, do they know me as a Christian? What is my husband's testimony of me? What is my wife's testimony of me? Bro, you speak in tongues in church. But you're a violent man to your wife at home. Are you not mad? You're deformed. So you're the one who is going to ask yourself that question this evening. As I invite you to pray and just ask the Lord to set you. There's a song we used to sing in those days. I don't know whether you know it. Search me, dear Lord, and know my heart today. You don't know it. The one you know is me. I know go suffer thy life. Brother, come and help us pray. We need to beg God this evening. Because... Uh, what, what, listen, oh, listen, <laughs> even though I've said come and lead us to pray, nobody can pray for you better than yourself. Nobody can answer this question for you better than yourself. I need you to check. We are celebrating you as a Christian. Are you really a Christian? Do we know your heart? You might be sitting there, you're a masturbator. Will you not go back to God and say, Father, see, see, see I'm a, I am a clay that is mad in the hands of the potter. If we look at you, we will not conclude. Jeremiah could celebrate the pot. The potter said, no. I want you to go back to the potter of your life and say, Lord, check me. Check me. Am I correct? Let me not wait until my eyes are out like Samson before I realize that the Lord has left me. Brethren, can we rise up tonight? The Lord has come to us again. What will it be? Your response, my response to him. Can we begin to cry unto our Father this evening? I want us to be sincere in your heart. Oh God, what is my present situation before the Father? Let's leave the way men assessing us. How is God assessing you? Can we cry to God tonight? Let's plead with God for help. Our life must not continue like this. The one that will score us, the one that will assess us, is all knowing God. Nothing can be hidden from Him. Nothing can be hidden from him. He knows everybody in the private and in the public. Can we beg him tonight? Can we beg him tonight? Can we beg him tonight? That you are not hearing this message at the gate of heaven. What a great privilege. What a great privilege for God to come this way while we are still alive. Can we plead for help this evening? Can we ask him for help? I hope somebody is praying tonight that, Lord, I have come to meet with you. Your word has come. Oh, Lord, search my heart. Search my heart. Search my heart. We can hear God's word this way and our, and our life continue the way it used to be. There must be a change of heart. As the Lord has come, bringing forth his word this dimension. Confession bring about the new confession. Can we plead with the Lord for help tonight? Can we beg him for help? Can we beg him for help? Can we beg him for help? That Lord, come and do your spiritual work in my life. Come and do your spiritual history in my life. 
Oh Lord, come, come, come and restore me back to your plan for my life. I believe you are praying. Let's pray, let's pray. We don't have more time to pray. We must beg God for help. We must plead for help from the Father. He's the help of the helpless. Oh Lord, we have come. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Say, Father, I cannot leave this place without your touch. We have come there to where the porter, porter is sitting waiting for us in order for him to be able to, to repair our life and to make us fit for his use. Can we beg him this evening? Can we cry unto him? He, regardless of how the situation of your life look like, it's possible God was even pointing directly to the situation of your life. It's possible your situation is not mentioned. But you yourself, you know, if it come tonight, you won't be able to go with him. Can we ask him for help? 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 Lord, we have come. We have come to the Zion. We have come to the holy place, Father. Lord, your help from above. Your hair from above, your hair from above, your hair from above. In Jesus' name, we prayed. There's something we will do briefly before we round up. Let's every eyes be closed. I know the Lord has come with His word. You know, you are here today, and God has spoken to you. The need for your life to be restored back to him. As we all close our eyes, can you just raise your hand to Jesus? The Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. The Lord bless you. Just raise it unto the Lord. God suffer will still come again to pray for us. He will have to carry us to the throne of grace and plead with the Lord to have mercy so that you can start afresh with him. God bless you. God bless you. Raise your hand very well above your head. I don't want you to be ashamed you are in God's presence. If the Lord come this way and you want your life afresh again, please, can you quickly begin to take another stop of faith by coming to the altar so that the servant of God will come and pray for this life. Quickly, quickly, there's no time again. Just come to the front. You may be a leader in the Hewahef whatsoever, but you are here before the Lord. It's not about a man. God bless you. God bless you. Let's do that very well. Those of you raising up your hand, just come. Just come to the, to the altar as, his, as the Lord through his servant lead us again. In Jesus' name we pray. Please open your eyes and look at me. I know that <laughs> there are many of us here that your personal reputation is more important to you than what the potter is saying. I'm going to pray, but I want to give you an opportunity. You are evaluating your life. You know the potter is saying, what you have become in my hands is not what I intended for you to be. Please, let's not have keyboard, please. Please. This is serious. I want everybody to pray. Because sometimes, we we'll just finish. Let us pray. Some people will be singing for us to pray. They will not pray. We also may need to be answering this call. Is the Lord pointing to something and say, but you know, there's a malformation. There's a malformation. If that is, as we sing this hymn, just come to the altar. It's before your father. Just come to the altar and we will pray and cry out to God together. I wish some, I know that Samson will be wishing he did it earlier before his eyes were all. Take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to be if you are coming just come now take my moments and my days let them flow in ceaseless praise let them flow 
in ceaseless praise. Father, behold your children who are kneeling before you at the altar. They've despised shame. They didn't come out for any man. It is unto you. You are the potter. These ones are deliberately identifying with you. Lord, you know the areas of our lives that you are pointed to that brought us out here. Jehovah God, I plead with you tonight that every malformed area of their lives, you will put your hand upon it tonight. Let there be forgiveness, Lord. Let there be a redesigning of these lives. Let there be a reforming of these lives. Let there be a transformation of these lives. Holy Spirit, please come and do a fresh work in their hearts and in their lives. That from today onwards, they will turn a new leaf. May this day mark a fresh beginning of a fresh walk with you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Carry them by your hands. Carry them by your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. I would like you to write what brought you out. And please drop it before you go so that at the appropriate time, we will be calling for you to talk with you. Some of you may need further counseling. God bless you.